Hey math kids, today we're going to talk about parallelograms and to start off we're going to fill out this table um, with different properties and different types of parallelograms. So we'll start with just parallelograms in general. So uh, it's not that great of a parallelogram but that's fine. So a parallelogram is defined by having two sets of parallel sides that are congruent to each other. So the opposite sides are congruent. And so if we come over here, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent. Um, opposite angles are also congruent. What that means is the angles that don't share any sides, so those two red angles I just drew, those are both congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary, that is also true. And what that means is if I look at two angles, like if I'm rotating around and the two that come next to each other, those will always add up to 180 degrees. Um, four congruent angles and four congruent sides, that's not true. Um, these two angles don't have to be the same, they just need to add up to 180. So um, we don't need four congruent angles and we don't need four congruent sides. And then moving on, diagonals bisect each other. That is true. And what that means is if we draw both diagonals, the point where they cross is going to make that into two congruent pieces and that into two congruent pieces. Um, so let's mark that off. And then uh, diagonals are congruent. That is not true. Diagonals are angle bisectors, that's not true, and diagonals are perpendicular, those are not true. So these properties that we have for uh, parallelograms, since all of these shapes over here are also parallelograms, we can mark off all these properties, and we'll just talk about the remaining properties for each of these. So if we're moving on to a rectangle, which most of you should be comfortable with, has four right angles um, and then two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent. Um, so we're going to look at this four congruent angles. That is definitely true for a rectangle uh, because they're all 90. Four congruent sides, that's not always true, right? Um, diagonals are congruent. So in this case, that's going to be true. So if we draw a diagonal there, both of those yellow line segments are the same length. Um, so diagonals are congruent. And then diagonals are angle bisectors. That's not true. And diagonals are perpendicular. That is not true either. So now we're going to move on to rhombus. And rhombus is almost always drawn like a diamond. So rhombus is defined as having four congruent sides. And so we have this doesn't necessarily have four congruent angles, so I won't mark that. The diagonals are not congruent necessarily, and the diagonals are angle bisectors. So what that means is if I have an angle right here and I draw a diagonal, whoa, that does not look good. If I draw a diagonal down like that, that means that this piece of the angle and this piece of that angle are congruent. And then diagonals are perpendicular. That is also true. Um, so I'll mark that off. And if we draw both the diagonals, for them to be perpendicular, that means there's a 90 degree angle right there. Now, um, a square is a special parallelogram because it's a rectangle and rhombus. It's both pieces. So if it's true for rectangle or rhombus, we mark it off in square. And that means the square has all of these properties. Um, so you can copy this down if you didn't do it yet, but those are all the properties that we're going to use for the next part of the assignment. Um, but before we move on, I just want to draw kind of a cool little Venn diagram. So if this is the set of all quadrilaterals, we could draw a parallelogram inside of here because all parallelograms are quadrilaterals. Okay, and then if we look at a rectangle, 
all rectangles are parallelograms, so rectangles go inside there. Um, a rhombus, some rhombi are rectangles and some are not. And so, but they are all parallelograms and they're all quadrilaterals. And then the last piece is the square. And a square is when a rectangle is a rhombus also. So that's kind of a visual description of how those all fit together. Okay. Now we're gonna do some homework problems. So uh, we're given a parallelogram. And we're given the diagonals. And it's A, B, C, D, and E. Um, we're asked the, or we're given the information that the measurement of B, A, C is equal to 50. And we want to know the measurement of D, C, A. So if we uh, read this angle, we say B, A, C. So it's talking about this angle. And then if we read this one, D, C, A, D, C, A. So it's talking about this angle. Now, we're given that this one is 50. And if we recognize that a, B, and D, C are parallel lines, and then it's cut by a transversal, we see that this is our 50 degree angle, and this is the angle that we want. Um, if you remember from previous lessons, that's alternate interior angles, and they are congruent, so the measurement of this angle is 50 degrees. Okay. Um, let's try another one. So the this time we're given a rhombus. And we are given, let's see, it's labeled as A, B, C, D. And then their, whoops, their intersection right here is E. Um, and we're told that AE is three centimeters, DE is four centimeters. Um, we want to find DB as well as AD. Okay, so um, AE right here is three centimeters, DE is four centimeters. And then db is this entire length. Now, one of those properties of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect each other. It's actually just a property of parallelograms in general. Um, because of that, we know that this is also four centimeters. So the entire thing must be eight centimeters. And uh, the next one, uh, we have a property of rhombus that says the diagonals are perpendicular. So I'm looking right here. Um, since they're perpendicular, this is a right angle. And so I can draw this. It's a right triangle if I pull it out. This is three, this is four, and we wanna find AD right there, which I'll just call C to make it easier. Um, this is going to, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so a is 3, b is 4, c is c. We multiply this, 9, multiply this, 16. Add those together, it's 25. Square root both sides, we get 5 is equal to c, which is 5 centimeters right here and five on our diagram right there. Okay, we'll keep moving through this. Um, let's see, we have a rectangle this time. The e and A, B, C, D. Okay, um, so measurement of angle 
VAC is equal to 30 degrees. And we want to find the measurement of angle, um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to do a different one. So it's still a rectangle, but I'm going to do um, measurement of angle AEB is equal to 120 degrees. And then let's find measurement of angle CAB. OK, so AEB. AEB is this one. So it's AEB, and that's 120 degrees. And then CAB is referring to this angle. So since it's a rectangle, rectangle has a couple properties. So parallelograms, remember, they uh, bisect. Let's see, the diagonals bisect each other. So for a rectangle, that's true right there. And then also the um, the diagonals are congruent. So we're going to use both those properties. And uh, since this is getting bisected, and then this is getting bisected, but it is the same length, on a rectangle, all those are the same. And so what that does is it creates a isosceles triangle right here because those are congruent and then we're just asked to find this. So it's like one of those on one of our previous assignments where we do 180 minus 120, we're left with 60, and then that 60 has to be split up between these two. So we cut it in half and we get 30 degrees for the angle we're looking for. Okay. Now, let's try another one. Um, so this is a rhombus. And this time we're given, let's see, so it's 30 and 5x or 3x minus 3. So that's just to be clear, 3x minus 3. OK, since it's a rhombus, it has the property that it bisects. Let's see, where is it? Um, diagonals are angle bisectors, so this thing. And so these two angles will be congruent. So we can say 30 equals 3x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides. 33 equals 3x. Divide by 3, divide by 3. 11 equals x, and that's all we needed to do on that one. And I think that's all we're going to do on this one. No, one more. So one more problem. Whoa. My mouse is not moving the right way. OK. Uh, this time we have a rectangle. And it's A, B, C, D, crosses at E. OK, and we, let's see, we have AC is equal to 4x minus 54. And then we have BD is equal to 33 plus 1x, and we want to find the value of BD. So we want like an actual number for BD. So since AC is a diagonal, and since BD is also a diagonal, um, a property of rectangles is that the diagonals are congruent right here. So we can just set those equal to each other. So we can say 4x minus 54 equals 33 plus 1x, or just x. And so I can subtract the x's. I can add the 54. And that becomes 3x is equal to 87. Divide by 3, divide by 3. And x 
equals 23. I think that's right. Let me check that with the calculator. Eighty-seven divided by 3, 29. Okay. Messed that up, but that's okay. 29. So that's not our answer, but we're going to use that. We want to know the value of BD. So now it's 33 plus 1 times 29, or 33 plus 29. We add those. It's going to be 9, 10, 11, 12. We carry our 1, 62. So BD is 62. If you need additional help, please come to Math Lab. Until then, calculator.